good and your mercy endures forever. Come on, you know, sing it out. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Sing that again. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. People from every nation and time From generation to generation We worship you Hallelujah, hallelujah We worship you For who you are Say it again, we worship you We worship you Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Psalm 150 says, praise him with the instruments. So here's what I want you to do, band. Hit me one time. Two, three. That was fun. Praise him with the instruments. Two times. I like that. Three times. All right. Psalm 149 says, praise him with the dance. So it's not just us on stage, it's you out here. So when I count it off, we're gonna dance together. One, two, one, two, three, come on!
God today. It is so good to be in the house of God today, celebrating his goodness, allowing him to fill us up. And in this moment, as we worship together tonight, I don't want you to miss what God has for you. And I know some of us have been fasting. I don't know if you broke it before you came here. I hope you did, because you're probably hungry right now. But sometimes it's in that hunger and in that thirst when we are closest to him. Because he's showing us that it's not, as he said in his word, it's not bread alone that we are sustained by, but by every word that comes out of his mouth. So tonight, as we worship him, we want to worship him for who he is not just what he's done. He's been faithful to you because that's who he is. He's been good to you. And if you're in this room tonight and you're drawing breath, that is the goodness of God. That is the goodness of God testifying to his glory, his might, and his love for you. So as we worship tonight, don't hold anything back. Don't hold anything back. He deserves everything you have and so much more. Father, we, we give it all to you tonight. We celebrate your goodness, your mercy to us. Lord, we thank you that, that you've called us to you when we are hungry and thirsty. Because we know that you can sustain us and you can fill us and you can help us in our time of need. And so despite all the things that may have happened, all the things that might be pulling at our affections and all the thoughts that might be popping in our mind. We push those aside and we think on your goodness tonight. We thank you for it. That's who you are. We pray together in Jesus' name. Everybody said together. Amen. Amen.
Upon every name you are worthy. I'll never stop singing your praise. I'll never stop singing your praise. I'll never stop singing, I'll never stop singing your praise. Never stop singing your praise. Never stop singing your praise. Never stop singing. We cry worthy. We cry worthy. We cry holy. We cry holy. We cry worthy. We cry worthy. We cry holy, as we cry holy. We want to thirst for you, God. We want to thirst for you, God. You're worthy, God. Oh, you're worthy. you just in your own words tell the Lord how great he is out loud let's do that all together would you just tell him how great he is in your life go ahead and have a seat if you would students you can just sit right here I just want to talk for a few minutes and, and uh, a couple of things I want to say before I jump in to what I think the Lord wants to do here tonight is, is uh, the first thing I want to say is would you thank these guys for leading us in worship. <laughs> Over the holidays, they were preparing while we were resting, and, and uh, we're grateful that they did that. And to those of you who served and brought people during the Christmas Eve services, let, let me just say to you, great job. Great job. I could not be more proud uh, uh, of a church. And uh, last year we exceeded the highest Christmas Eve that we've ever exceeded by like 10%. And this year we exceeded the highest by about 25%. And uh, we, we we're watching people do things in, in, in men and women and boys and girls' lives that, that is remarkable. And that second verse that we just sang that I, I'm going to live like my king is risen. 
Not like he's no longer dead, like he's no longer placed in a grave, but he is risen. I'm going to preach to my soul that you have already won. You know, when we fast and uh, when we pray, one, one of the things we're doing is preaching to our soul. We, we, we just went on singing, and, and even though I can't see it, I'm going to keep believing, even though I can't see it. And there are moments that we can't see it. That, that we, we wouldn't need to sing a lyric like, even when I can't see it, I, I'm going to keep believing. If there weren't moments where we can't see it. And, and, in fact, Jesus was very clear about, in this world, you will face trouble. He didn't, that's not, that should not be a shocker to us that we're going to face trouble. We, we sang a moment ago, your goodness is chasing me. I was thinking through and the Holy Spirit was just reminding me uh, of, of decisions and, and things that we're praying about. And, and quite honestly, compared to what the world is dealing with all, all around me, I, I am overwhelmed by the things that I'm praying about. This great thing or that great thing and this good thing or that amazing thing and, and wrestling with the things that are good from God on my life. And, and and the thing that is so obvious as I was singing that song, it's chasing after me. Like I can't even get away from the goodness of God. Like it's just racing after me. He's chasing me with his goodness. And, and I don't know why, because I certainly don't feel like I've earned it. I certainly don't feel like I deserve it. I, I certainly don't. I, there, there's a humility on that that's like, good. I don't know, God. But I feel like God is saying, hey, quit running. Just receive my goodness. And maybe you need to receive tonight from the Lord. And we, we, we just finished a season of give, give, give with all these Christmas services. And you're serving and you're bringing people and you're loving on people. And, and as we begin a new year, maybe tonight what you need is to receive from the Lord. The Bible says that David encouraged himself. He, and David wasn't always up. When you read the Psalms, you're like, he, he's schizophrenic. But what he did learn how to do is in those moments of depression, in those moments of anxiety, in those moments of discouragement. And I have found in the last two or three years that the devil is trying to work overtime in the body of Christ to discourage the body of Christ. And, and, and that we have no choice but to act like David and, and, and walk through moments where we encourage ourselves in the Lord. It's not some mumbo jumbo. It's not some self-help stuff. It's not some psychology that we're working on, but we're encouraging ourselves in, in the Lord. R remember that moment where, where the people of Israel, uh, Moses had brought them out and, and, and then they wanted water and they were thirsty and, and, and they got mad and they, and they got ticked at God and they got ticked at Moses and they're like, take us back. And, and, and God said, go up there and just strike the rock and water's gonna come out of it. In, in that moment of discouragement, when you can't see it, when you can't feel it, you have a choice as a child of God. Will you let that discouragement push you away from God? Or will you let that discouragement push you closer to God? They had seen God part the Red Sea. They had seen him make bitter water sweet. They had seen him turn the Nile into blood. So what if you're in a moment where there's no water around you? If you're the children of God and you've seen what God can do, they know the story in Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the world out of nothing. If he can create the whole world out of nothing, there is nothing that he cannot do for you. And so when you can't see it, when you can't see it, when you can't hear it, when you can't feel it, you, th that's a moment of discouragement. But in that discouragement, you encourage yourself in the Lord and you begin to move towards the Lord. What if they had said to one another in a worship night around that mountain, hey, do you remember when God parted the Red Sea? You remember when God made the water sweet? Do you remember when God made the Nile blood? Do you remember when he got us into this promised land? Do you, do you remember? And they started encouraging one another in the Lord. Think what God would have done. What God did do is give them water out of a rock, which is the least likely place to get water from. A rock in and of itself is dry. But he, but he brought water out of a rock. You say, well, that, that seems impossible. It is impossible, but not for God. Not the one who created the whole world out of nothing. And, and we just sang it a moment ago. And even though I can't see it, I'm going to keep believing that every promise you've made is as good 
as done. And part of what we've been doing, and I don't, I don't know how many of you haven't broke the fast yet, and I'll just be honest with you, today I struggled. Like there were multiple times during the day I just thought, I got to get up and going, and I would just, 30 minutes later, I would find out I was asleep. The flesh is strong. But, but we are not flesh only. Right? When, when, when we fast and when we uh, pray and when we worship, what we're doing is preaching to our souls. Re- remember, we are triune beings created in the image of God. We, we've been reading it in, crea- in Genesis. Those of you who are doing the one-year Bible with us, and if you're not, it's not too late for you to catch up. We're made in His image. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Th- three parts. We are spirit, soul, and, and body. In fact, the way I always say it is this way. You are a spirit, right, that has a soul and lives in a body. You are a spirit that has a soul and lives in a, a body. The spirit is who you are. That, that's where the Holy Spirit dwells and resides within you. Your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's what we got to preach to. Our mind. Take every thought captive. We, we have to preach to our will, where, where we bow it before the Lord. We have, we have to preach to our emotions, where what we feel lines up with what we know to be true in the Word. And, and David said in Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul. He was preaching to his soul, telling it what to do. And there are moments where you've got to tell your soul what to do. It doesn't matter what people like and don't like it, what people follow and don't follow. It doesn't matter if somebody cancels you or somebody, you know, cuts you off or somebody puts you out of the, the, the limelight. It, 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 you got to preach to your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And, and as we worship tonight, and as we begin a new year tonight, could, could we preach to our souls? And could we say like David said, oh, my soul, I will bless you, Lord. Say say that with me tonight. Oh, my soul, I will bless you, Lord. Let's do that again. Oh, my soul, I will bless you, Lord. We're going to bless you, Lord, tonight. And we want to bless you, Lord, in this year and throughout this year. Even when we're hungry and, and, and we, even when we're thirsty, we want to bless you. John said, uh, Jesus said in John chapter 7, he said on the last and greatest day of the feast. Remember, we, we've talked about this at camp before. On the last and the greatest day of the feast, he stood up and he said in a very loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever, say whoever. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. In order to come and and, and to drink, according to Jesus, you got to believe in Jesus. But in order to continue to drink, you got to continue to come in faith to Jesus. And and the whole point Jesus was trying to make is, hey, the source of this fountain that that is in the well of faithful believers is not found here in this world. By the way, the scripture is full of references to the blessings of the Holy Spirit in connection to water. And what Jesus was making, the point he was making in front of this, all of this worship involving water it, it is that living waters don't flow out of Jerusalem or anywhere else in this world. Anything that you're chasing after, anything that you gives you significance or gives you uh, fulfillment or uh, temporary fulfillment, it doesn't come from any of that, but it only comes from one place, the dwelling place of Christ, which is in me and, and in you. Listen, when you come to Christ and you drink, you're not only satisfying your thirst, you're, you're coming in contact with such an abundant supply that according to Jesus, authentic rivers now flow out of your inner being. 
That's amazing when we think through it. Because sometimes we think that Jesus doesn't have enough to fill me. But Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. When you come to me, I'll not only fill you, but I will fill you so much that out of you living water will flow. That whole thought that Jesus is making is stressing the outgoing nature of a spirit-filled life. That this springing up well, it not, not only refreshes our soul, but it flows out of us to refresh the lives of those around us. And church, I just want you to know, I I am praying for this body, for the body of Christ called Battle Creek Church, that it would be so full of the Holy Spirit this year that we cannot contain all that he is doing in us. We can't contain it, that that it becomes so contagious. And and in fact, uh, this year, uh, the last few days as I'm praying, I'm looking in my five-year journal. I've told you I keep a five-year journal and it goes back to 2020, and, and, and in 2020, I'm looking at it, and there are moments where I was praying for some things, and there were moments where I was asking God for some things and believing God for some things, and I, I kind of flipped ahead to March of 2020 just to read what, what was on my heart in, in, in that day, and I felt led the last few days to pray that, that we would become contagious, infectious as a church in in this world, that a pandemic of the Holy Spirit would move in and through this church, through through our lives and into this city, all all over the city. Let's pray together. Father, today we we wanna thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We, We don't take you for granted, Holy Spirit. We believe in you, we need your ministry, we are dependent upon you, and we wanna apologize to you, Jesus, for all the times in our lives that we have looked somewhere else to get that thirst quenched. Whether it was with our plans or a sinful habit rather than your will or depending upon others' opinions or trying to please them above trying to please you, The living water is not there. You are the living water. So tonight we come to you together and and together we say, Jesus Christ, we believe in you. Holy Spirit, we believe in you. And we ask for your living water to come into our souls. Quench the thirst within us for significance and and the thirst within us for uh, life and for wholeness and for peace. And we ask you, Jesus, to make us so aware of the Holy Spirit that we could walk in step with him. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to stay thirsty. In your name, Jesus, we pray, and together we all say amen. Let's stand together and continue to worship the Lord and preach to our souls and ask the Holy Spirit to fill us tonight. We're we're, going to sing holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty who is seated on the throne, uh, on the throne of glory, high and lifted up. May your presence fill this temple while we worship you tonight. Glory, I lift it up. The 
believe it. Come on, he's high. He's high and lifted up. Come on. Your presence fills the temple where we worship you. Oh, oh, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah to the one who came and made a way. Say hallelujah to the one who died and rose. That's good news, church.
fullness of joy in your presence life everlasting in your presence you are surrounded by worship we count it a privilege to be a part of that worship that rises to you so let it be a sweet sound day
you shed your blood for salvation you broke the curse for our freedom oh jesus you
of our adoration. You are worthy of our worship. You, you were, you are, and you will always be. Forever, Yahweh, the great I am. And your Holy Spirit lives in us. Oh, Father, we ask for a fresh indwelling of your Holy Spirit. Help transform our wants towards spiritual awakening in Jesus' name. We love you, Lord. We said it together. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat if you would. I, I want to remind you a few weeks ago, I, I taught on that name of God, which we call the tetragram, four, four letters, Y-H-W-H. And in English, we are so vowel pr prone. We, we've added vowels, but there are no vowels in, in the Hebrew alphabet, and, and they're all consonants. And, and remember, when Moses asked God his name, God shared with him uh, his name, and, and that's the name that he gave. And, and so these letters together, if you, if you remember, I, I said that in the Hebrew mindset, in the Hebrew culture, that the, the YH... And the WH, every breath in and every breath out, is actually declaring the very name of God. And think about that again, that, that even since I've preached that, we've had several babies born in our church, and, and every single one of those babies, when they take that very first breath, Every deep sigh that we'll take over the course of this next year, that we're, we're declaring the, the name of God. And, and God sharing his name with us implies that he wants to know us. And he wants us to know him, that he's not hiding, and uh, that, that uh, every deep sigh, every baby's breath, and every single one of us at some point in our life will take that very last breath. And as we breathe in and we breathe out the very name uh, of God, God's name. Th this week in, in the one-year uh, Bible, there's a verse that caught my attention. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 26. I I I've read it maybe 50, 60 times. And, and it never jumped off the page like it did th this time. And uh, I've talked to several people about it even this week. It, it's Genesis 4, 26. And it's that moment where Seth ha has a son named Enosh. And then, then there's this sentence that just appears right there after that birth and that genealogy. And it says, at that time, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. I don't know if that would catch your attention. It, it, it didn't mind for years and years, but this week it caught my attention that what was happening before that time? This is the third generation of, of humanity and, and what is happening in this moment? And I went down a little rabbit trail and uh, some of you like it when I do that and some of you are like, can you just focus? But, but, but in the Hebrew, which is the original language of the Old Testament, that word translated call means to call out to or to call unto. And in the Greek, which is the original language of the New Testament, that word translated call means to invoke a person or to call them by name. So by definition, calling on the Lord is audible. It's not silent. It's not under our breath. It's audible. It's to say the name of the Lord out loud. Can you imagine a baby at a park or a swimming pool or somewhere falling and crying mommy silently? Or daddy in their heart and in their mind, but not with their lips. In the same way, 
we can cry out to the Lord when we are spiritually hungry, when we are spiritually thirsty, when we are in need of his care, we call on him in every kind of situation that we find ourselves. And I don't think that that phrase, call on the name of the Lord, is a metaphor for prayer. And I don't think it's a metaphor for worship. I, I, I think it's something different when we cry his name. Years ago, I, when I was a youth pastor in Arkansas, I, in fact, I think it was in between the birth of my first two children, uh, we went to eat and, and then she met me, Meredith met me at the church and we, we went to eat and then she brought me back to my car at, at the church and I got in my car and, and it was a big church with a big parking lot like this, like a mall. A- and I drove that little Honda Accord because there were no cars in the parking lot fast through the parking lot, but it was raining and it was sprinkling and it was dusk. And so it was dark. And and, and as I got into my car to leave the church, I took my glasses off and I washed them. I was cleaning them on on my shirt to get the water off of my glasses while I was driving fast, about 40, out of the church parking lot. And it wasn't unsafe. There was nobody there. Okay, so don't write me a letter. (laughs) But one of the lights was out. One of the light poles was out. And kind of like here in this parking lot, there were concrete pillars about this big around, about this tall, that held those light poles. And I hit one of them right in the middle of my car. It just came to a dead stop. And I was still cleaning my glasses. I had no idea what had happened. But I I knew that I hit the seatbelt. In fact, for about six weeks, I had a Miss USA bruise right across my chest. (laughs) My knee went into the keys, and one of the keys went all the way into my knee joint. Ripped my favorite slacks, too. And and in that moment, I I just remember having no idea what happened. I don't know if you've ever been in that moment where, where it happens so fast, like your brain is not caught up with what happened. I just knew I was hurt. I didn't know where I was in the moment. I didn't know what had happened. I wasn't sure what condition I was in or what was going to play out. But, but as they came and got me and put me in an ambulance and took me to the hospital, uh, the, the guy in the car said, hey, what did you say when, when, when you hit that pole? And, and on some days, it could have been not something I wanted to share. But on that day, when I hit that pole, the only two words that three words that came out of my mouth were, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. The name of the Lord coming out of your mouth, not just in a moment like that, but in ordinary moments, in moments where we're not aware that we need his help, in moments we're not aware that we we need him uh, to, to breathe into our lungs or to cause our heart to beat. James tells us, Is anyone among you sick? Let the elders of the church call them and and, and let them come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. I, I, I want us to take Yahweh at his word tonight. Sometimes people ask me, hey, what, what do we believe about healing? I was like, we believe in healing. The Bible talks about healing clearly. We're saved by his blood, but by his stripes, every sickness and disease is healed. But we prayed and it didn't happen. Here's what I'll tell you. Every time God heals his children, Every time God heals his children, sometimes here and sometimes there. And sometimes he does it through prayer. And we've seen that dozens and dozens and dozens of times in this church. And sometimes he does it through medicine. All truth is God's truth. If it's true, it's God's truth. If a medicine works, it's because God made it work and said it would work. But, but the other thing that you need to know today is, is that no healing here on earth is permanent. 
right? No healing here on earth is permanent. We've been reading about all these people, and they died, and they died, and they had so many kids and so many sons. And, and I hope you're underlining some of those names and, and looking some of those names up in the Bible. But, but there were a couple of them. Remember that just kind of just God just took them. But everybody else died. And everybody since ha- has died. And there was sin that entered the world in that very first generation. In fact, I was reading it in the ages of the people. Did you see the ages of the people that list how old they were when their son was born, when their son was born, when their son was born? And I know I sent it to some people, but there's just math in the margin of my Bible. And I don't remember all the names, but but remember the dad, the granddad of Noah was 182 years old when his son was born. And he was 187 when Noah was born. And then it says later, and Noah was 600 years old when the flood came. And so 187, 182, and 600 equals 969 years. Now, when you play with that number, because it's in the the scriptures a couple of times, that number, 969 times. Who lived to be 969 years old? Methuselah. And Methuselah, some scholars say in the Hebrew, almost all scholars say in the Greek translation that is quoted in Luke chapter 3 in the descendant and bloodline of Jesus Christ. The Greek translation means when he's gone, it will come. When he's gone, it will come. And there are a couple of passages. We've just read them this week in in Genesis that talk about on the 10th day of the whatever month of the whatever sunshine of the whatever, you know, whatever, that this is when the flood came. And I don't know how to do this, but some scholars have done it to say that when Methuselah died, because he did, clearly didn't enter the boat and he was righteous, the flood came. And his name means, when he's gone, it will come. And, and you say, what, what point are you trying to make, Alex? Here's, here's the point. The oldest person who ever lived on the face of the planet, 969 years, was holding back the flood was holding back the judgment, was holding back the, the, the merciful God of the Old Testament in His grace and in His mercy. And today, I want you to hear, you serve a God who's full of grace and is full of mercy and is full of healing and wants good things for His children. And He told us to ask for healing. So we're going to ask. And so tonight... There, there's no more seats. And we added 150 seats this morning. There, there's, there's no more seats. There, there's people here. And so the, here's how we're going to do this. At the front of, of, of both sides, we're going to put staff members w- with anointing oil. At the back, we're going to put staff members with anointing oil. And then out here in this hallway, out here beside us, we're, we're, we're going to put staff members uh, w- with anointing oil. And if you are sick, and that may be physical, it may be financial, it may be relational. I think relationships is one of the second places that the devil is attacking the body of Christ in in an unusual way. That's why we're starting a series next Sunday on real relationships, real ones that God wants to bless. But it may be relationally that you're sick. But if you want to take God at his word and you want to be prayed over for healing, then we're going to invite you to come and and visit one of these stations around the room and out in this hallway and and be prayed over. In fact, let me me just call an audible. Could I have just some of you guys go out in the hallway, hallway, lobby, okay? And if you want to be prayed over, then I want you to stand and I want you to go to one of these stations. You share with them how you want them to pray. They will anoint you with oil. Let me say this. The oil just represents the Holy Spirit. It's just a representation. I, I, don't, I don't know that it, it's holy. It Maybe from Costco. It doesn't matter. It represents the Holy Spirit. 
and we're taking him at his word. And so there's nothing magical about the oil. There's nothing magical about the minister who's going to pray. What we're doing is obeying the word of God. And power comes from God. And when his faithfulness meets our faith, there's a moment that God does what only God can do. And so even if you're not going to be prayed over, would you just pray? And just kind of look around and pray over that young man or that young lady or that older lady or that older man. or Whoever you see, just pray over them. And let's worship the Lord for a few minutes in this way, by trusting Yahweh at his uh, word. So let, let's move if you want to move. lined up in every corner of the, of the room and out in the hallways. And so church, I, I want us to worship together. You pray, you pray. Let's join together. The Bible says where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. Let, let, let's take him at that word as well. And let's have way more than two or three praying for healing and believing God for him to touch the lives of our brothers and sisters tonight.
Can you say amen? All the prayers that have just been or are continuing to be finished up in uh, the next few minutes for men and women and boys and girls across our faith family that are asking God for healing. We stand with them and we, we believe with them and, and we, we encourage them today. I think we have a couple more songs, and uh, I, I want you to stand to your feet if you would. Let's, let's call the band uh, back out here. And uh, as you're praying over the next few days, on, on Sunday, four days from now, uh, we're, we're going to start this marriage series. And as I said a moment ago, the enemy is attacking relationships. He's attacking homes. He's attacking the very definition uh, of marriage. And as we walk as truth bearers, we walk with the courage that Jesus is with us, right? He's with us. But he's not just with us. He, he, he's, he doesn't just bring presence. He brings conviction and uh, in us and through us. And so as light bearers, we have to believe God for the courage to not only go to the places he wants us to go, but also to say what he wants us to say, right? And, and, and so uh, the, to believe that he called you to go somewhere, but he wouldn't be with you to say what he needs you to say would be foolishness, right? And so I want you praying for our church, but I also want you to invite. I, I think this series has the potential to reach lots of people at every stage of relationship or relationships with, with people around them. It's applicable to everybody. It's not just a marriage series. It, it, it's uh, for everybody. So I want you to pray over the next few days and also ask God to help you bring uh, people along with, with you in this series, okay? Uh, if you would, guys, come and lead us. And how, a couple more songs. Yeah, a couple more songs. Come on, church, sing that up. Our God reigns forever, your kingdom reigns. Our God reigns. We believe it tonight. Our God reigns forever, your kingdom reigns. 
church, we're not done yet. Are y'all ready? Come on, put those hands together. Come on.
fun. Thanks for worshiping with us tonight. It is awesome to see what God has done in this place. And uh, let's carry that out through the year, right? Let's carry that out to Sunday, to the next months. Bring that energy every single week so we can worship together week in and week out. You hear me? So let's go out and uh, y'all have a great night. It's been so much fun. Y'all are dismissed.